from a sales point of view, I can just step back and let my previous customer sell the house. When, when somebody buys a home, particularly a new home, any home for that matter, it is the most expensive thing that most Americans ever invest in. You know, they have to know that we're there to help them, we're, we're looking out for their best interest, and it's our job to, you know, somewhat hold their hand and walk them through it and give them a comfort level. And that's always the case in selling homes. I've been doing it for 23 years. That hasn't changed. Hey, it's Paul Montalongo, and welcome to another edition of Housing Industry Insider. Uh, appreciate you being here. And today I have the unique privilege of interviewing for you Patrick Lawler of Highland Homes here in San Antonio, Texas. Now, what's interesting is the reason I asked uh, Patrick to come over and talk to us is because he's experiencing a great deal of success personally uh, from his sales and also um, as a company, like we were talking a little bit earlier, the company's experiencing growth and especially at a time when some companies are not. Now, given the fact that we are in San Antonio, Texas and that San Antonio, Texas is one of the stronger markets in the country, I understand that, but there are still some distinctions here that we want to glean from uh, Patrick and what he's doing with buyers uh, in this particular marketplace so that hopefully you can share your insights with them, uh, with the viewers, and uh, uh, you know help, well, help people be successful, sure. right? So, so. Right. what's the best thing for you about being a new home sales counselor? Well, it's a lot of fun, you know, once you get people past the anxiety, it's a happy time for folks. I mean, it's a big deal. You know, I, I just closed a house last week to a fellow I've known for 20 years at church. And, and I mean, he said he, he told himself he would never move and he never wanted to go through building a house. And he was nervous the whole time. The day of closing, we were standing in the house and I asked his wife, I said, I said, Jeannie, what's been the most difficult part of this whole process for you? And she looked at her husband, she said, him, <laughs> because he worried about everything the whole time. And he said, I said, Mark, why were you worried? He said, it's in my nature, I'm a worrier. <laughs> but he was so happy when the product was done. He, he said, he's so glad he did it. He's moving his children into a new school. He has a daughter he wanted to get into the new high school that's right across from our community. You know, his sons are happy, his wife's happy. He's got this beautiful, beautiful yeah. new home. You know, it's a great feeling. I mean, that's something they'll probably be there for 25 years. Right, yeah. you, know? you know, buyers come in, prospective buyers come in, we both know this, and they have perceptions. You know, they have perceptions about the home, about the builder, about the marketplace, sure. about the ease or difficulty of the process. What, what's the common perception uh, from your perspective that you are, are hearing most from prospective buyers? It is the most expensive thing that most Americans ever invest in. Right. So they're naturally tentative. They're naturally a little nervous. Um, they don't fully understand the whole process in many cases. And it's our job to, you know, somewhat hold their hand and walk them through it and give them a comfort level. Right. What has changed this year is the anxiety and the fear level is just ratcheted up tenfold <laughs> because of all the negative media, media coverage right. about housing prices falling, you know, foreclosures at record highs. Right. And that makes your you job know. more difficult, doesn't it? Or more challenging. Let's, let's not say difficult. It makes it more challenging, more interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it does. To, to it, it's, you know, and you can't blame people for their, for their hesitations. I mean, there's, right. a, there's some bad news out there right. in the country. What do you specifically do to help a buyer manage that perception or that fear or to alter that fear, you know, so that they get back on the track of, hey, this is a thing I need. What, what do you specifically do? I think the first thing we I have to do with every customer is establish some trust. You know, they have to know that we're there to help them. We're, we're looking out for their best interest. Well, Personally, how do you establish trust? A lot trust? of ways, get to know them. Um, probably one of my greatest assets is having been with Highland Homes for 13 years now, next month, here in San Antonio, selling different neighborhoods all over the north side of town. I'm able to pull on hundreds of past customers oh, okay. and let those folks tell the new customer their experience that they had dealing with our company right. and how we are a builder with integrity that we follow through we do what we're, we say we're going to do you know I am I'm just the face of the company out on the front lines a salesperson in many cases the buyer never meets anyone but the salesperson and the construction manager but we're fortunate that we have a great team of support people behind us. Right. Okay, so, so Patrick, maybe you can tell me a little bit more about this, you know, taking a pro prospective customer and introducing him to a previous customer. Obviously, you have to maintain rapport with the previous customer, 
Um, but how influential is that whole process? Oh, it's tremendous. It's more powerful than any, anything I as a salesperson could ever say or, or illustrate. If I can put them in touch with a true, bona fide, happy Highland home, home homeowner who's been through the same process that I'm trying to encourage them to begin, that is just super powerful. There's nothing that a salesperson can say. I mean, that's a, from a sales point of view, I can just step back and let my previous customer sell the house.